Hello boys, and welcome back to another Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg speedrun tutorial. This video will be covering Sand Ruins Mission 1, and without further ado, let's get right into it. I will state now that Sand 1 is probably one of the easiest Golden Egg missions in the game, um, but the strats that I am going to be showcasing in this run through will be um, safer strats, because there are some very risky strats that you can go for that saves a minuscule amount of time, but they are there if you want them, and I will be breaking them down in the tutorial, but right now let's just run through what I would say is probably the best way to do this level, if you're starting out, if, at least yeah, let's say that. So, one of the tricks involves that crow there that shoots the fire, um, and it, it's, it's kind of monk s um, there's different ways you can do it, one that's less monk s and then there's one that's really monk s but it's really cool. And I'm just going to climb up here, and make sure we don't perform the cosmic. We didn't perform the cosmic, good. We have an armadillo, hello armadillo, goodbye armadillo. And then we have a bee, hello bee, goodbye bee. And then we have a green ring, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, pop. Grab our golden egg, and run off like so. With a dash jump. And then we go pick up all this fruit. Pick up the strawberry, pick up the banana. Kill this dinosaur, and then no matter what it drops, um, we'll max our egg. We got cherries there, which is good, but it doesn't make a difference. The only difference it makes is whether or not we're picking up one fruit or two fruits. Um, but usually you just pick up both fruits anyway. So, that's the level. And pretty straightforward, as you can see. We're already done a minute and 46 into the recording. Awesome. Um, but yeah, go to the front of the elder, as we normally do. And mesh B, talk to him. Oh, that's a nice little mash. I mean, it took a while to get started, but when I got started, it was nice. It was nice. And grab the emblem. So that was Sand 1, everyone. I hope that makes more sense to you guys. Um, and now let's break it all down and show off every single strat that you can do in this level. Take that water sip and let's get right into it. So fortunately, um, we're going to start the level off with a nice big skip. And it's really easy to perform as well. So, um, we're going to skip doing this entire section over there with the bee and going around the entire pyramid to get up on the wall from the other opposite side that we're on right now. Um, so we can do this by using this green ring. And if you see that when we bounce into this green ring, it bounces up and down, up and down, up and down, as I have showed off in my Forest 1 tutorial. Um, but let's just say we go at the minimum height. As you can see, we're going to bounce and roll and we won't make it. Um, so, how can we get it onto the ball? Well, that's easy. Uh, it's pretty easy, actually. When the hoop bounces up, we can then hold A and get across, and it gives us enough height to get across, because the difference between a max height on the hoop and the minimum, the lowest height is quite a lot. So, what I like to do is I like to dash jump into the ring, and then when it comes all the way up, hold A, hold towards the ball, and then roll. And as you see, you've made it up there like so. But if you are a bit worried that, hey, um, this is a bit difficult, this is a bit monka s um, because it seems very close. You can dash jump, then egg bounce over the top, and you just get a way bigger flex, and as you can see I got on there way easier. So from this point, you can go, you can dash jump around this way, or you can dash jump through here, which is what I like to do. So, you know, it's a bit tighter going through there, because if you fall off, you're going to lose a lot of time, because you've just abandoned your egg up there, and yeah, it's not, it's rough, it's rough, but you're going through here, then here you want dash cancel, jump, roll, and roll, roll jump, roll jump like that. Because you're rolling close to the ground, you should be able to get a double roll jump for free. You're then going to recover here, and dash to the left. But I am actually going to restart this recording because I've probably messed with some cycles that we would be like ignoring, but because I've been messing around, they're probably all screwed up. So just give me two seconds, guys. Also, I will show off like how that was, start was meant to look like again. So yeah, grab the text box. Dash jump in. As I say, I don't do the egg bounce strat, and then just roll. And then here we're just gonna thread through here. Dash cancel, roll jump, roll jump like so. And then when we recover, we're gonna dash through this pillar like so. And then we can just dash through here because the cycle should end by the time that we run through here. Um, so next we're gonna do is you see that you see that um, it's a box. It's just a big old rock. Um, at the back of these, there's a set of three. We're going to dash jump when we break the third the third rock. And that'll give us the right space to jump over this fire, like... 
so. And we're gonna land in this first green ring. As I said in my basic tutorial, you know, the easy stuff, um, you can roll when it's, you know, when you're over ring. Of course, if you roll from here, you won't make it. But if you hold forward and roll like here, you'll make it in. Easy. And then just roll jump across there, like so, in between these pillars. Um, you can take those rings one by one if you really want to, but it's up to you. But I'm just gonna cut this corner off like so, or just take a tight corner. And then we're gonna dash cancel jump over this fire, like so. Very easy. Then we're just gonna dash all the way up here, like so. And then you can dash jump here and roll into this ring. Um, you can egg bounce if you want to play it safe, because some people just roll, miss, and then just end up at the bottom of the pyramid again. And it's up to you what you want to do. Um, this is just how I prefer to do it. Um, next up, we can just short hop out of this hoop and land up here. Short hopping just gets you back on the ground quicker, but it, full hopping allows you to sort of go more to the left, but short hopping I think has been proven to be the most optimal. Uh, then once we're landed, we're just going to run through these pillars and run through the armadillo. Like so. Easy. Nice. Next up, we have the bee. Uh, the bee shouldn't be a problem if you just keep moving. So, basically, I think what I do is I... Because it's hard to like think about what you do when you're trying to verbalize it. But I think what I do is I dash. I dash jump. I egg bounce. And then I roll into the hoop. And I immediately go from the hoops. And the bee shouldn't touch you if you do this movement right. Um, but because I paused, I might have messed it up. But I'm just going to end this recording here because it's pretty good up until this point and I don't want to mess up to this dumb bee so give me two secs. Okay so I did actually mess up the bee movement so let's just run through that and then I'll do the bee movement and then I'll explain what I just did. Cool. Okay now I know what I did. So the um essentially I just dashed, I dash jumped, I egg bounced and I air rolled into the hoop and then I immediately immediately pressed A as soon as I got in the hoop to get into the air. And then you want to immediately press A again on the second hoop, just so the bee doesn't hit you. Um, sometimes the bee will chase you up to the second hoop, but as long as you move out the hoop immediately, it shouldn't hit you. It's very rare if you do the good movement that the bee hits you. If you really want, you can force the bee to um, dash and then kill it. That's why I usually I started running the game, but I, you know, I would have just learned how to dodge the bee, because it will save a bit of time. Sure, help out this hoop and hit the switches. And I like to throw off here and try and snipe the bee with the the egg. The bee shouldn't be a bot problem at this point, but just in case it ever is, I just like to try and snipe the bee. So let's talk about the root with the fruit. See what I did there? Because I said, I was like, cool, that's cool. Um, so yeah, hold towards the golden egg as soon as the cutscene ends, and we're going to dash jump behind us. The way we know how to dash jump is there should be the green ring there, or if you look at this chick, it should be to the left of this chick. So. Usually our camera will be like this, so it'll be behind us. So after this text box ends, we're going to turn around and dash jump off the pyramid. And as you see, the bee's not bothering us, that's fine. And then we want to just land and grab these free fruit. Run through the boxes and grab this strawberry. There is a banana in a rock to our right, and we need to grab that. As you can see, there's a banana there. Try and just hit the banana as you run through the rock, but if you need to backtrack and grab the banana, it's fine. It's fine, it's not a big problem. Um, now we can two shot the dinosaur, so let's just do that. One, two, and then whatever this drops will be good enough. As we see, we've got two watermelons, and that maxed out our fruit. Come over here, and then hatch roughly here, and then the emblem spawn there, so you just jump into the emblem. Um, but before I finish off this and do the emblem hatch explanation, because I don't even think I need to explain it, nonetheless, I've still got other stuff to explain, so let's get on with that right now. So the next two tricks that I'm going to show off um, involve the flame shooting crows that are up there, as you can see. Um, the problem that I need to explain and express right now is that this, these two tricks do not work on PAL or NTSCJ, as far as we are aware. And this is because of some patches they made to the game. They made the hitbox on the crow bigger and constant. So essentially what we're going to do, be doing is like a sign job off them, but... Um, as the hitbox is too big on Pound NTSCJ, it doesn't work, you just get hit. Um, so you have to resort to using the green rings, which ain't that big a deal, you're only going to lose like two and a half seconds at most. Um, so let's get into explaining these tricks. Okay, so the next trick that we're going to be showing off is the Crow Bounce, as I've said. Um, it does not work on Power or NTSCJ, so just skip this part if you're on this, those versions. And don't worry about it too much, because you're only going to lose two and a half seconds, it's fine. And 
not I don't think really any runners go for these strats because they are really like minuscule time saves for the like the risk that's involved. But if you like risk, go for it, you know, I'm not gonna stop you. They are cool strats as well. So we have a, a crow statue right here. And he's shooting fire. Lovely. We love fire. Cool fire. Um if you space yourself correctly, you can just egg bounce off it like so. And then you can use the side of the pyramid to extend the distance like so. As you can see, you can go much further by using the pyramid. Um, that's basically the explanation of the trick. Um, but we're going to be doing it on the other side against this pit, which is where it gets a little bit monk as a little bit scary. Um, and we're going to do it to cross this gap. Ideally, getting across this crow. Uh, the first wave saves about one second. It's very slow, but it's it's it's, it's safer. Essentially, we're going to egg bounce, and then we're going to egg bounce towards the end of this, end of this cycle, so we egg bounce down at the end of the cycle, and it should look like this. As you can see, we crossed the gap, like so. And it looked beautiful, it was very nice, a very nice little crow bounce we did there. Very, you know, it's a risky strat, saves about a second. If you value your run and don't really care about a second time loss, then don't go for it. Um, but if you want to look cool, swag for marathons, for whatever, you can try it out. Um, definitely learn it for ILs. Um, but that's the first strat. Let's show off the second strat, which is way harder, but saves about two and a half seconds. Let's get right into that. So the next variant of Crow Bounce involves a trick known as a U-turn dash jump, and this is quite an advanced movement tech. I, I'm quite bad at these, so this might take me a couple times to get it. Essentially, what it is, it's a dash jump that we, um, where Billy is on the back of the egg as he's going forward, and it's not really useful in many places. It's useful in like more tassing and optimized like ILs and things where like you want to do a KBC with a dash jump and look cool doing it. But um, yeah, I don't think really anyone does these in RTA. Um, I feel like this is the only trick where it's somewhat RTA viable, but it's still really risky. So this is what a U-turn dash jump would look like. It looks something like that, but probably Billy being a bit more on the back of the egg. Like that. Perfect. That was the perfect one. It's just, it's about how you like spin the stick. I think you do like a half circle turn and then you hold forward. I think that's what it is. Yeah. So you want to like dash, do a half circle turn, forward back and then hold forward, dash jump. And you'll end up on the back of the egg like that. Um, yeah, so the thing is you have to do this on the fly as well, which is the really scary part. So you turn dash jump. So that's how you turn dash jump. And this will be important for the next trick that we're about to do right now. Because this works on cycles, I'm going to explain it as we travel there. So, with the U-turn dash jump explained, um, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to approach that crow statue and not wait at all. We're just going to U-turn dash jump over the crow and then sign bounce off it. That's essentially what the movement is. So it should look something like this. So we're going to get here, half circle turn, and then sign bounce like that. And that saves about two and a half seconds, and you can get a massive dummy. That was so good, in fact, that the dinosaur didn't even spawn. Well... And I didn't mean to dash jump there, but whatever. That's the um, the U-turn dash jump. It's very scary. Um, it's definitely worth going for in ILs. But if you're going for a run and you just say you got Circus 1, Circus 2 out the way, and you have Sand 2 approaching, it, I, I understand why you don't want to go for it. It's it's not it's not a fun trick. It's a cool trick. It looks sick, and you look awesome for going for it. But it's so easy to mess up. If you get if you're good at U-turn dash jumps, I I definitely say go for it. But if you if you if you're not confident, don't go for it. Okay, so from what I've told you, there was only one route to hatch the golden egg very quickly. But there is actually a faster route to hatch the golden egg, but it does require you to get good RNG off the dino drop. Uh, but I will show that off anyway, regardless if I get good RNG or not. And I'll explain what to do if you don't get good RNG, in case you do go for it on a whim. Um, it only saves like a couple seconds. It's There's a reason why no one really does this in runs, because once you could go for it, you could easily just lose like... You can lose like three seconds for going for it. Um, yeah, so it's slow if you get bad RNG, fast if you get good RNG. So you can either take, go faster, be slower, or take the safe middle ground. So everyone just takes the safe middle ground. But regardless, from what we're going to do here, we're going to jump off this side of the chick and dash jump onto this cherry and grab this melon. We're then going to jump off the side of this pyramid like so and land on top of the dinosaur and push him three times. Grab these fruits and turn around. And as we got apples there, that's not good. 
but if by chance that you got um, a cherry, your egg would be maxed out by now and you can just go hatch. But as we didn't get that, um, yeah, we're going to be losing time here. But nonetheless, let's show off what you would do. You're like one fruit short, by the way, so you just want to grab this watermelon. <laughs> do that, essentially. And that's how you back it up. As you can see, we lost a couple seconds for going for the watermelon. But ultimately, we could have saved some time by going by getting the cherry. But I think that is everything in Sound 1. It's a very basic level. It's not much that you can really show off here, and it's pretty straightforward. So let's end the video. So yeah, I've been Kyron. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, join the Discord at... Mm, which is in the description. That's what I want to say. The Discord is in the description. Um, but if you want to follow me on Twitch, which is why he was getting mixed up with, you can do so because I will be doing Billy Hatcher speedrunning content with a higher quality stream coming very soon. Uh, probably already out by the time this video releases. Um, also, GDQ is coming up. Make sure you watch GDQ on the 20th. I'm um, not sure what time it is in America, but for the UK, it's around 12pm. Alrighty. Thank you for watching, everyone. I've been Cairo. Let's grab this emblem, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.